in the last video in this spot, we made these two stumps and in the process we discovered this much bigger tree is dead. The needles are still green, but it's full of woodpecker holes, which means the bugs are getting it. As soon as we start getting some warm weather in the spring, the needles will all turn brown. But we're gonna get it out of here now, put it on the wood miser before the wood degrades while it's still green, while it's still easy to cut. Before I do that, we get to watch this thing fall down and go boom, I have some business to take care of up here. All of the Douglas fir in this area are dying. This is one of them. This one and another one are the only two alive in this spot. It's just not a good spot for Douglas fir. Since the bugs are just gonna kill them anyway, instead of allowing them to breed bugs, might as well just take them all out. This one is all tangled up in this madrone tree. It's a really nice madrone tree. All this Doug fir is doing is taking moisture out of the ground and competing for these trees that are better suited for this spot. It's not big or straight enough to put on the mill. I don't want the firewood. Trying to cut it down is gonna just scar up this madrone. So we're just gonna kill it, and leave it where it is by girdling it. If you don't know what girdling is now, you probably will in less than a minute. That was a bit of a clumsy job of girdling, but the idea is the part of the trunk of the tree where the most life is right under the bark and on the outer edge of the sapwood. What happens when you cut rings all the way through that part of the tree, it stops the transport of water from the roots up to the rest of the tree and the tree dies. It's basically what the bark beetles are doing. But in this case, instead of killing the good dominant trees like the bark beetle trees are, we're killing these ones that aren't very good trees trees that have much better trees to take their place. Actually, in this case, it's not bark beetles that are killing all these firs, it's the flat-headed fir borers. Now, two rings is good enough, three is even better. If you wanna make it even more effective, you can chop out the wood, I mean, or the bark in between the rings. Then we have the same situation over here. Got a good madrone tree here. A Douglas fir here that's barely big enough to maybe make one or two eight-foot logs. Very small ones. It's going to do more damage getting it out of here than it is just leaving it. It's a good madrone tree that's better suited for this spot. But this Douglas fir is blocking sunlight and pulling water out of the ground that the better trees around it could definitely use. You might be able to hear the woodpeckers working on all the dying trees. Seems like a tough way to have to make a living. Normally when girdling a tree, I don't usually chop the middle out. Just cutting the rings is usually enough, but I want these to dry out quickly. The reason I'm taking care of these now because we're in the fall when the tree killing bugs are dormant. And I want these to dry out before those bugs fly in the summer and start attacking trees. By then these will already be dried out and they won't attack them. Or more importantly, they won't go inside and breed them and then spread. At least that's what the foresters tell me. This is an anticlimactic way to take a tree out. Doesn't make the best video, so let's go cut a tree down. This one should be pretty easy, pretty straightforward, as if you hadn't heard that before. 
drop it right down to there, the same direction we pulled out the other one, the first one from the last video. Open hole right here, we'll just graze the side of this big pine. Try to protect this madrone, fall right down there. Listening to all these woodpeckers banging on dead and dying trees, feels like I'm in the middle of Armageddon. I always like it when things do exactly what they're supposed to do. But once the tree hits the ground, that's when the work really starts. Time to get serious, take off the jacket. Don't let me forget this. Because of the size of this tree, I'm going to put a block in it just to make it easier on the tractor. What was I saying in a previous video about there always being problems in the woods? Since the log is suspended over the gully, the weight is being put into this top, which is digging into the ground. When you have problems, you always want to have solutions to your problems. The solution I'm going to try is to move the tractor from over there where it's pulling straight into the ground to up there where I'm pulling at this angle to try to keep it from pushing straight into the ground.
Looks much better with that tree gone. Mm-hmm.